If you're watching this for a recommendation on which multi-tool to buy, then you're in the wrong place. If, however, you want to see how I got the optimum everyday carry for my mountain bike rides and possibly trash an expensive multi-tool in the process, then keep watching. What I will show here is how I went about deciding exactly what tools and spares I needed and what tools I could get to fulfill that in the lightest and most compact way. So after mountain biking for well over 20 years, my starting point was a saddlebag based kit with a few extras stored in the camelback that I pretty much always ride with. The rest of my kit comprised of an Alien 2 multi-tool, some vintage tire levers, a spare 29 inch inner tube, a CO2 inflator with two cartridges, and I'm using a Lezine pressure drive pump at the moment, which I'm not a fan of, but haven't found anything better yet. I also carried a basic tubeless plug kit as well as a standard puncture kit. And for emergencies, I do carry and would recommend people to carry a small first aid kit. So first for the quick wins. Saddlebags get covered in crap during winter and my new bike has a dropper post which is not exactly bag friendly. So the saddlebag is going and I'll keep everything in the camelback which is an immediate saving of 140 grams but the size and shape of gear becomes somewhat more important. I'm still going to carry a pump so one canister of CO2 is more than enough so I'm ditching the spare. Of the original kit items, the second largest by weight was the spare inner tube, weighing in at 216 grams. The biggest problem, pun intended, was actually its size because it's quite bulky when carried in the camelback. So I'm swapping this for the ultra lightweight and compact Tubalito inner tube. At about 20 pounds, this is up to four times the cost of a standard inner tube. Even weighing 170 grams less, I certainly wouldn't spend that much if I was running tubes. But since I have converted to tubeless, the Tubalito is purely there for emergencies, so I only need one, making the pack size and weight savings worth the expense. When running tubeless, it's worth carrying a spare valve core since they can easily get fouled up with sealant, but both the Tubalito's valve stem and core is actually removable, meaning that it can act as a spare valve. I've also traded in my old metal tyre levers for these plastic levers from Topeak, which are more rim friendly. Now in more than 30 years, I haven't damaged the rim with the metal levers, but at least it saves 20 grams if nothing else. The next step, which is perhaps the most important, was to complete a full audit of every fastening and fitting on my bike and compare it against the current tools I carry. The Alien 2 has over 24 tools, but at least nine of these are of no use on my particular bike. It's also let me down several times where I can't use some of the tools because they won't reach the fasteners on the bike. The shape is very bulky, especially when carried in a backpack, so I'm swapping this out for the Wolf Tooth 8-bit pack pliers. The Wolf Tooth tool has all of the fastener tools that I need in a much more usable format, plus a quick link tool, and at a fraction of the size and weight, it's a really nice tool to have, and I've made a separate review video of the 8-bit pack pliers, which I'll link here. It is however missing a chain breaker, so I've added this tiny 30 gram KMC chain breaker, which despite its diminutive size, works really well. Okay, so this next idea for next addition to the EDC kit, is gonna sound a little bit crazy, but bear with me because I think it should make sense. It's basically this Leatherman Bond multi-tool, which at 165 grams pretty much wipes out most of the weight savings I made when I swapped the Alien for the Wolf tool. However, in terms of repl direct replacement for tools, when I swapped out the Alien, I lost a knife. Now the Leatherman of course does have a knife, but it's also longer and stronger and probably going to be much more useful than the small one that was on the Alien. More importantly, here in the UK, this one does not lock. Whereas on the Alien Tool, it does lock, which makes it not street legal. This is street legal. On top of that, I also gain a strong pair of needle nose pliers, beefier flat and Phillips screwdrivers, and a saw edged file, all of which can come in handy on the trail. Now it also has an awl, which let's face it, does anybody ever use? I've had plenty of pocket knives and multi tools over the years, and I rarely, if ever, have used an awl. But as a bike tool, I'm thinking it can be adapted. Or alternatively, I'm about to wreck a perfectly good brand new multi-tool. Here goes.
so the big question is, did my idea of adapting the Leatherman all to be a plug tool work? Well, the answer is pretty much yes, sort of. As a test, I was certainly able to fit even a large size plug using the Leatherman. I did have to be a bit careful to avoid the tool folding over, though it was actually safe since the other handle will stop it folding more than about 80 degrees. In retrospect, if I was to do this again, I'd make the slot in the tool central rather than leading off to the left, since that would require more even pressure and probably avoid the folding issue. When I plugged the same size hole using this Lezine plug tool kit, it was probably actually harder than the Leverman to push the plug in and to extract the tool. Looking at the inside of the tyre, the results were pretty much the same. So for now, at least, I suspect that I will carry the Lezign tool with me as a backup, since if nothing else, it can hold spare bacon strips. But I'm pretty confident that the adapted Leatherman will be reliable. And of course, the knife on the Leatherman can be used to trim off the plug excess to avoid the new plug getting pulled out when breaking. Overall, changing my kit contents has saved just over 500 grams in weight. It is also not only smaller in total volume, but is in much more pack friendly shapes. For fasteners, the wolf tooth gives me more reach and leverage, and for me, the versatility and robustness of the Leatherman's pliers and other tools make it well worth the wait. But if the wolf tooth meets your, all your fastener requirements, then you could save another 160 grams by excluding the Leatherman. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, then please do hit that like button. And if you are interested in seeing other videos I make, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. But most of all, thanks for watching.